We've got uh, a bit of a heartwarming story for you now. There's not much good that comes out of cancer. I'm sure you'll agree. But it was my next guest's brush with death due to throat cancer, which brought her closer to her dad. And the result is a book all about his rather amazing life as a Lancaster bomber during World War II. Gillian Horner is the author. She lives in Pudsey. She began to delve into her dad's life whilst recuperating from surgery and radiotherapy that followed. And Gillian, we are going to talk about the book that you've written about your dad in a moment. I just think it'd be interesting if, first of all, you can take us back to you finding out that you had cancer. Oh, absolutely. Um, if that was back in, in 2008, at the beginning of 2008, and it was just literally, I had a lump in the back of my mouth and it didn't hurt and it wasn't going to go anywhere. So we went to get it checked up and when we got the results back and we were told it was cancer, it was perhaps possibly the saddest moment of my life, really. We felt numb when we came away from the hospital. Um, the birds were singing in the trees and I, I told my husband they were singing for me. And everything was grey, all the grass was grey, everything was grey. But from that moment onwards, I had the most wonderful support. The Bexley Oncology Wing is just state of the art and the people there were just magnificent. My first, um, my first consultation there, I was greeted by a team of experts. I had a surgeon, a cancer expert, lots of doctors, speech therapists, technicians, and they told me that they were a team that were going to look after me. To, please excuse me, I need to take a quick drink. Okay. I have no saliva glands. OK. And from that moment onwards, I never felt alone. And the treatment was quite invasive. Radiotherapy is invasive. I had a little chemotherapy and a lot of radiotherapy, and I was in hospital for three months. I would say that 90% of my recovery is down to the health services, which is so often denigrated. And those people there were so professional. And as I say, I never felt alone. And How, how soon was it when you discovered the lump in your throat? Mm? Where, whereabouts was it in your throat? It was the soft palate and my throat at the back. Could you feel it or did I you could, see it in a mirror? I could just feel it when I was swallowing. But it felt hard, no pain, nothing. And obviously the doctor um, gave antibiotics initially, which did nothing. And then of oh, course the doctor I looked at it and said, GP here's initially. some antibiotics. Yeah. Uh, th then, presumably, he suggested, did he, that you go and see a specialist? Well, I, I did go see a specialist, and then I finished up and referred back to the National Health Service because it's a team effort to look after you if you've got cancer. Everybody who gets cancer is totally different. They have it they might have it slightly differently and the treatment is tailored to their cancer. Everybody's reaction to treatment is also different. Yeah. So every single one is a different situation. When and the word cancer was mentioned the first time, was yeah. that a shock to you? Or oh. did you have that in the back of your mind that it could be I cancer? I had it in the back of my mind and I think to be honest, most people if they've gone for tests such as this, they are aware that there's a distinct possibility that they're going to have the big C. But some people are in um, denial. My gran had cancer, yes. uh, and she totally blanked it out. Did she really? She she wouldn't acknowledge it. Um, and it was heartbreaking to be there in the room to watch a nurse say, you've got cancer, do you understand what I'm saying to you? And she said, yes, yes, yes. But then it was, can I go and see the royal wedding on TV now? She died from it. Uh, they gave her three months and she died within three months. Um, so some people suffer from denial and just will not even mention it. And we didn't mention it over the next three no. months. I thought it was very important that, well, she's chosen not to talk about it. Um, obviously, in your case, you didn't deny it. No. You had to accept the fact that you had cancer. I how did it change it. your life? I know well, that sounds eventually. such a stupid question, but how did it change your life? It, it, changed, it, but it, it changed my attitude to life more than anything. Everything that was important no longer was. This pursuit that we all have to better ourselves and get more money sort of went out the window. And all the little things that were nothing on a normal basis were suddenly important. And the support of my family was just phenomenal. I, I believe that my recovery is 90% the treatment and 10% has been down to the support from my family and my own mental attitude. 
and I, I really do feel that if somebody can be encouraged to address it and cope with it and develop a positive attitude to it, they will enjoy those few years that they have, whether they're going to recover or not recover. Mm. What happened to you in surgery then? What, what, what did they have to do to make you better? Well, I, I had an, a, an operation initially, which should really have been um, just a biopsy privately. And unfortunately, I did suffer some repercussions from that because it wouldn't heal. And I did bleed rather a lot. But that, that was cauterised and sorted out by the National Health Service. I would always say National Health Service as opposed to private. Sorry, private people, but mm. that's the way I feel. Yes. And now you have to drink water because you mentioned you have no saliva glands. I have no saliva glands. Um, I cannot swallow solid food. I can only eat soups and yogurts and soft desserts. But I can still socialise. When we go to a restaurant, they'll tend to want to bend over backward to find something for me to eat. Yeah. People are really, really supportive. And it's not something that people tend to hide from these days in cancer because it affects one in three of us. There's a young girl in Pudsey, and she was only in her late teens. She got throat cancer. She can't eat again. I don't know her, but I can't help but feel sorry for her. I know what she's had to go through, but to me, my cup's half full. Hmm. So, What led to it, do you know? I think possibly, I think stress has played a big part in it. I had had a job um, for six years for a waste management company and they sold out and relocated their offices. So I had to find another job. The job I got was for a company in the middle of Leeds who uh, they were um, a property management company and it, I was the finance manager and it was a very stressful job. Mm. And I had to learn five people's jobs and make sure the money came in and we're mm. talking about a huge portfolio. So it wasn't alcohol or smoking. I would. As, I didn't you, as smoke. you'd expect. I I, I had I have been a smoker, but I hadn't smoked for over fifteen years. I did like a glass of red, red wine at night, though. Yeah, <laughs> understandable. Unfortunately. Listen, let's take some music, and then we'll come back and talk about your dad. Is that okay? Because the book's Brilliant. all about your dad, uh, a Lancaster bomber in the Second World War, and it was the cancer, really, a brush with death that, that led you to become closer to your dad. And we'll talk more about that in a second. Right now, Jackie Wilson, a great song, and your love, higher and higher. Your love. 